Let's do this. The Cult of Hockey podcast by the faithful and for the faithful. I'm David Staples of the Edmonton Journal, and I'm here today with Bruce McCurdy. Welcome, Bruce. Hey, David. And this podcast is brought to you by the planet. What is that planet that's at the start of our podcast, Bruce, which is your avatar oh, for that's, that's Skype? Ju- that's Jupiter, which is where I think the uh, the feed for tonight's game was beamed from. You're not too happy about the uh, TV coverage of the preseason, I understand, my friend. No, I am unhappy. As a, as a paying and through-the-nose paying Sportsnet customer for Oilers coverage, I can understand in the preseason with their small Alberta markets why they might be reluctant to show a Tuesday night game against the Coyotes, for example. This is Saturday night, the last night before the beginning of the season. It's both of their Alberta markets playing each other. One broadcast, both markets. Get it together, fellas. I could have been watching this game in front of the fireplace with my wife on the big screen, and I wound up in my cold office watching it on the internet, and I'm not a happy camper right now. That's better. Not sit up, a pop, happy sit camper. up when you're ranting. Read my lips, Sportsnet. Not <laughs> a happy camper. You needed to cover that game. They had Toronto against Detroit on five, count them, five Sportsnet channels. Uh, well, you know, I guess it costs how many men, people to man the game. Like, if you'd get better ratings for that, you'd think, than anything else, but it might cost them a little more. Saturday night, last preseason game, you're trying to get trying to get your audience in the mood for hockey. Calgary against Edmonton, two markets, one broadcast. Get it together. Not good enough. Uh, yeah. So my, I'm going to rant a little bit too because we're going to talk sure, about the bubble, bubble players a little bit, Bruce. Yep. But before we talk about the bubble players, now Nurse played 30 minutes this game, and oh. Darna, uh, I don't know. I think Logason. I don't know. He only played three shifts, Logason, in the third period. So, and there, I don't know what was going on there. But 30 minutes for Nurse, and then 21 minutes for Adam Larson. But man, that that those two guys, they're not in the preseason, have not got it done at all. And tonight they were particularly bad. Like the first goal against Larson, I don't know. Lar- Larson and Nurse, Nurse both managed to take the same player going to the net instead of Larson creeping out on the shooter reader. And, you know, obviously uh, Koskinen should have had that shot. Mm-hmm. But um, nonetheless, even you give even Tobias Reader like two full seconds to tee it. Like, you know, look, 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 look. Oh, there. And, you know, that's what Adam Larson did. And Nurse turned it over um, on the uh, third Calgary goal. They, they Right after that, they had a kind of a lazy play where they allowed a pass up to the front of the net. I'm just not convinced with this as a shutdown pairing, Bruce, because both guys, um, you know, their they're offensive IQ, I don't think, for either player is, is, uh, is great. And you know what? They're defensively, they, they, better, they better do better than that. They got to get their um, stuff together because that was I, yeah. yeah. There's been too good. many lapses, and we're looking at we're coming off a year last year where they had too many lapses, and you know I mean in addition to those getting burned for two of the three goals and burnt by getting burned on the goals, each guy spent two minutes in the penalty box because he got beat, and he had to take a guy down, you know, and and they just need to sharpen it up. We'll see what happens in the regular season. So I'll I'll. Yeah, it's, I'll rant it's, some more then. Yeah, but I mean, it's not like they had, like you say, I wouldn't be saying anything, but they weren't great last year in mm-hmm. the shutdown role. Both guys made way too many mistakes on grade A chances against. They were leaking them all year long at too high a rate, an unacceptable rate for a defenseman in that role. They've got to do better, and I, I want to start seeing it. These are veteran players in the heart of their career now. So mm-hmm. Play like it. All right, uh, the um, the. The bubble guys, Bruce, we're going to go through them. And I, I'll tell you what, I was really, really impressed with a few bubble players. Mm-hmm. Too. Let's do it this way. I'll, 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 give you my, I'll give you my two favorite bubble players, and then you give me your two favorite. How about that? So I, they might be the same, though. I they thought, might Nygaard, be the same. I thought mm-hmm. Joachim Nygaard and, and uh, Gaetan Haas bingo, bingo. really, really showed. And this was before they scored. Yeah. They really showed. Uh, why the orders brought them in. Now, um, the orders were in on Nygaard before Holland came, but I think Haas is kind of a Ken Holland guy. Yes. And uh, I was um, I was kind of getting increasingly won over a wee little bit, but tonight I was completely won over by the guy. He can he can he is an NHL plus skater. And if yeah. there's one thing I'm tired of seeing at forward with the Edmonton Oilers, it's NHL minus skaters. <laughs> and we still have a few of them on the team, but Haas was wheeling around the ice 
all night long and starting to get confidence, carrying the puck, making plays, trying to score. And eventually he did when, when uh, Nygaard nice set up. Goal. And then Nygaard also set up um, Zach Cassian. So, and Nygaard, his speed was evident all night long. He was just making plays uh, on the forecheck, getting on guys. Not a second late, but when they get the puck, he was on them and was very effective because of that. So um, count me in as, as hoping that Haas, and, and I believe Haas and Nygaard have both, Nygaard have both earned spots on opening night. That's what I would say. I don't see, I don't see Sheehan, I don't know mind Colby Cave. I'm not a big Riley Sheehan fan, but I, I don't think Sheehan or Cave have um, played at that level that Haas just demonstrated in tonight's game. Go ahead. Well, I saw Haas good on Thursday night, and I saw him good again tonight. And you were talking about speed. I mean, Negar, without McDavid, uh, other than flashes of uh, dry sidle, um, Haas and Negard were the two fastest players on the ice for Edmonton. Yes. And, and they were making stuff happen. I tell you, all along, I've been thinking, Haas, he might be destined for uh, Bakersfield, and Colby Cave might be starting the season on the big club. And one play early in the third period. Are you hearing that? Yeah, I hear you. One, oh, am I making noise at my end? One one play early in the third period. Uh, am I hearing uh, what, Bruce? Yeah, i got to close something here. Oh, you got some kind of radio broadcast going on? Yeah, it's Oilers' website. Listening to the Bee Gees. It's been driving me nuts all night. And it's haunting you even now. Yeah. Maybe you're just, you're just imagining this, or maybe it's like a <laughs> poltergeist. Oh, here's Tippett. Tip. Shut her down, Bruce. Shut that down. Okay, you're good? Yeah. All right. Um, so, Bruce, uh, Thomas Yurchko, you know, Yurcho, Yurcho, that's it, Yurcho. Thomas Yurcho. I, I thought he was also good. And um, not great, but good. And um, your, your screen's kind of flipping in and out. I don't know. What, do you have some windows open or something? Uh, Thomas Yurcho uh, was okay. And Bruce, I'm going to make a comparison to Thomas Yurcho that you're not going to like, but I think is accurate. Teddy Purcell. Teddy Purcell for Thomas Yurcho. Uh -huh. Can you hear me? Yeah. Barely. Barely. You can only barely hear me. Did that just happen? David, we're going to have to do this again. Sorry. What's I going on? I can't find this. I got to shut it off. There it is. Jesus. Sorry. Let's keep going. Oilers website. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Thomas my night. Church, Bruce. Thomas my night. Well, yeah, I was talking about Gaetan Haas. Okay. And all of a sudden I had these big voices booming in my ear from the Oilers website for about two minutes there. I hope people didn't hear it, but I sure no. did. Oh, I didn't. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, Gaetan Haas, uh, I, I've been liking him the last two games. There was one brush he made in the third period when he went up the middle of the ice at the million miles an hour and he squeezed. He zigzagged to the left and back to the right and he was into the zone like he was uh, carrying a bottle opener. Like he just went right through the defense and in at speed. And I thought Colby K wouldn't get make that zone entry in about a million years. No way. And, you know, and so yeah. at that moment, I'm thinking, you know, maybe this guy's going to have the edge on making the team over a guy like, well, you say Riley Shane, but we'll talk about him too, I'm sure. Well, I, I think Shane has an edge over Cave. I think Cave um, has a two-way contract. Shane doesn't, for one thing. Um, Bruce, I liked... Uh, I like I like your show. I was comparing him to Teddy Purcell because I think he's kind of a big, tall, finesse player. And Teddy Purcell, like this is forgotten because he was, you know, rancid in Edmonton. But he had a couple good years in Tampa Bay and was a good offensive player, complimentary player to Steve Stamkos, I believe. And I could see uh, your show having the same role here in Edmonton this year. I also like Josh Archibald. I thought that was his, uh, like, I, maybe I was just, maybe I just have memorized his number now and I'm, I'm looking for him, but I thought Josh, number 15, Josh Archibald was hustling all night and was by far the most effective player on that really super ineffective line with Kara and Sheehan. Um, what do you think of your, what did you think of your show, Archibald? Well, your show, I mean, he's, he's got some real offensive moxie. Yeah. Uh, he made a beautiful pass. 
And he made it very quickly, kind of a control of bouncing puck, and he fed it right across the goal mouth to dry saddle. And Riddich made a fantastic save, kind of save the Oilers could have used one or two of tonight, to be frank. Uh, and uh, robbed Drysaddle on a, on a bang bang play from uh, from the side, but it was a great pass from uh, from Mircho. He did make a, a mistake or two, um, but he was uh, you know, quite noticeable in the game and and uh, uh, easily could have had a point or two along the way. He's uh, he's shown a fair bit to me. So the two players I didn't like, Bruce, were Kara mm-hmm. and Sheehan mm-hmm. and Shahan as I've alluded to already. Um, yep. I thought Marcus Granlin was okay-ish and Sam Gagne were, was okay-ish. I don't have a lot to say about either of them. It was it was Granlin's first game back. But mm-hmm. Kara and she, Shane are afflicted with the disease that afflicted the Edmonton Oilers last year. They are too slow. And um, they had. if you're going to be that slow, you better puck protect well, you better be super smart, you better be physical, um, you better do a lot of other things to make up for it. But we saw Jujar Kara's act, let's face it, what he scored three goals all last year. Yep. And I'm not confident at this point that he's going to score much more than that. He's got to do way more. And I don't think he should be in the opening night, night lineup. Um, I would not have him there. And, and I think that line is too slow with both of them. I think that line might work um, if you had one of them as kind of the big physical player on that line with a, with a faster player. But that's not working right now. It's not even close to working at, you know, the grind line that, that um, I pegged early on to be the third line. And I think that's mm-hmm. what, what Tippett has in mind for them. I it's, do not too. Gonna, it's not going to work. I don't think that's going to work. Kara and she- Shane between them are too slow mm-hmm. and Archibald can't make up for it. He needs, a, he needs to work with another faster player out there and the owners have them now. So um, maybe that's I'd where say, Haas goes. Eh? Maybe that's where Haas goes. I don't think he's going to go on the wing though, but maybe. No, no, at center where last game it was Haas between uh uh, Kara and Archibald, and they had a good game in Winnipeg. Yeah, so uh, that's what I'm seeing. Like, I don't know. What do, what do you think of those two guys, Bruce? Have you, this preseason for both of them? I don't hate Shane. I've, I've seen things that I like. You can see he's experienced, and, and uh, he doesn't leave much. He doesn't make a lot happen, but uh, uh, he's okay in the penalty kill. He controls the puck not bad on the cycle. He's not fast. Uh, he's... He, uh, you know, he moves about with broad Zaki and speed at this yeah. point. Yeah, and Kara, like I've been seeing him pretty good, but tonight I didn't see him good at all. I didn't think he had a very good game at all tonight. So, all right, let's keep going down the list. Uh, Brandon Manning. What say you, Bruce? <laughs> I still don't like the trade. <laughs> That's my bottom line. Oh, God, what a <laughs> terrible move that was. Anyway, um, and um, listen, he, William Logason, I thought, was playing way better. And I don't know what, why he got, if he got benched or what happened, but he stopped playing in the third period. But mm-hmm. it's not even close. William Logason's a much better player than Brandon Banning at this point. William, <laughs> William Logason can move at the NHL level. You can at least keep up. Come on, and Manning and Benning together, Bruce. Oh, jeez. I, I saw Lagerson make one really good stop where Calgary looked like they had established a good, strong cycle, and he just flat out went and, you know, rather than just playing the contained game, he went right out of the guy, and he took him off the puck, and he won it, and they got it out. Uh, but at other times, I saw him and Bearer were playing together. Uh really get owned in the defensive zone. When Calgary got more experienced players on against them, it was, uh, uh, they had the better of it. Um, uh, and they wound up, uh, a couple penalties resulted from them being unable to contain uh, Calgary players down deep behind their own goal line. So Bear, Bear got one on Kachuk that only Kachuk would draw. Dreisaitl got tackled in a much more obvious manner later that didn't get called, but... If he had a kachuk on the back of his uh, name bar, they probably would have called it. That's my, that's my take. That was a, it, it was a pretty, <laughs> I saw the penalty. It was a pretty quick little tap or cross check that he gave him there. So uh, I, I don't know if that, yeah, compared to the abuse that Drysaddle regularly takes, 
Mm-hmm. Um, and that was not at a, anyway, I'm not going to go on about the refs, but uh, listen, Manning and Benning, Bruce, if we have to watch those guys in a pairing this year, I'm going to like, you like, won't. no, come it'll on. Be, it'll be Manning and Russell and it'll, or sorry, it'll be Benning and Russell. And well, if someone, gets, better, if someone gets hurt is what I Way mean. better than Manning and, and Benning. I really see Matt Benning as the seventh D man. When, when Joel Parson gets back, Matt Benning right now, to me, he's the seventh D man. And Ethan Bear and Joel Parrison have both played better than, than Matt Benning. And I would, I would have those two guys in the lineup over him, at least for a few games. Both players are just more able to move the puck. Now, maybe Benning will look okay when he's teamed up with Russell. We'll see. Like, maybe he's just, maybe it just kind of exacerbated everything. His, his weaknesses were exacerbated because he was with Manning tonight. And, you know, his mm-hmm. Benning's a little slow and, and Manning's just the slowest. So... He sure let go of one rocket at, at Riddick, though, in the last five minutes or so of the third period. I, I'm not sure if he got him in the head or, or, or what. Oh, off just, the mask there. Oh, that was good. That was a that was an absolute bomb off a of bending stick. Second one of those in preseason. He hit the post the other night on another rocket from the blue line. Nice to see him yeah. shoot the puck like that. Yeah, and who knew that, that, please? Who knew that Pokey Riddick was still in the NHL after all these years, Bruce? <laughs> um... Okay, have we dealt with, have we, uh, I think we've gone, oh, Granlin, do you have anything? Yeah, oh, he, got oh, a, he got a bit of a weak penalty, cover, trying to cover for Bear and Laguson when they couldn't contain, he came back and he took down uh, uh, one of the one of the flames, I think Froelich on the play. Froelich, he was in the middle of it, eh? Like, I really didn't like the hit he gave Dreisaitl. No, I was uh, not. He had him right in, the, right in the numbers, and Dreisaitl, I was worried he'd hit his face on the dasher at first. It's like the old Robin Regera and Al Shemsky stuff, right? And it was he hit him right in the in the numbers in the in the name bar, and he got two minutes for it. And the Oilers didn't like it. Cassian uh, gave him a piece of his mind on the spot, and then uh, both Nurse and uh, Chason really clocked um, uh, Frolik in the third period after that hit. And I'm sure that there was payback in mind. And you know what? I don't mind it. That's hockey. So the others, the three goals scored against the others were, of course, by two by two by the streeter <laughs> and one by Milan Lucic. Um, I was glad to see Milan Lucic in a Flames sweater. He was everything I expected him to be. Except I'll for that goal, it, eh? Except for that goal. I'll <laughs> leave it at that. And to, Tobias Reuter, I will not miss him at all either. I, I mean, if he, if he had not had terrible puck luck last year, if he had had like average puck luck, he would have, might have scored four or five goals for the Oilers. Um, last year, he was well, tonight. Tonight, he ran one more goalie and scored two more goals than he ever did as an oiler. Yeah, and unreal. So the hockey, the hockey gods have a very weird sense of humor. Is all I yeah. can say. And they got Reader and Lucci scoring all of the goals for Calgary against Edmonton. Uh, yeah, some people believe we're living in a simulation, Bruce. <laughs> Well, it's it's set up. Who, who writes this? Who, who writes this stuff, man? Yeah, I mean, it's seriously, so Toby Reader, Game Star. There were stars number one and two in the game, too, Reader and Lucic. So what do you think we're going to see on opening night? Do you think we're going to see um, the three centers um, centering their own? Nope. No. You see McDavid and Dreisaitl. Yep. Yeah, me too. And RNH. I thought, I who's thought they might. Be our, who's oh. going to be on RNH's wing, Bruce? Well, Neil is sort of the default for now, but I don't know that Neil won't find himself with um with Dry Settle and McDavid before too too long. Niegard and Yurchko? Uh, Neil and Neil and yeah, I mean Niegard and, and Yurcho are, are certainly the big uh, 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 movers and shakers, I guess, out of the sort of other guys that we're hoping somebody can seize a role in the top six, you know, because somebody's gonna have to. So they're they're the only two guys I think who have um, I mean, Cassian had a good game, but I don't really see him as a. I, I like. I really like him as a third or fourth I line. I think player. he'll start the season on the first line, but I don't know how long he'll last. I'm not sure about that. They've had him off there. They bumped him off there a couple games ago, and I'm not sure that they're going to go back to him. Um, yeah, and then the third line. I think we're going to see Haas. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to see Archibald. And maybe we'll see Kara. Maybe you're right. Maybe that will be. I like Archibald a lot. You know, like this week, I saw I like good him good in all, all three games. Just I really buzz, like Just him. wasn't around. Eh? Taking, making a beeline for the puck and taking the body, trying to stir things up, cause turnovers, and 
good on the cycle. And, you know, I mean, he's a million dollar player. Don't expect him to be uh, uh, all world. But I think as depth players go, I think they got themselves a legit NHL caliber player there. Though Haas and uh, was Cassian might have had a little bit of chemistry. I think they're out quite a bit together, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Ka- Cassian had a, had a, he had five shots on net, and every one of them was dangerous. Yeah, uh, Rid- Riddick made four good saves off him, and then he finally scored. And of course, I didn't see the goal because that was when the feed went down. Uh, Cassian was know. probably the Oilers' first and, star, and he, and he was the third star in the game behind behind Reader and Lucic. Uh, he had five shots, four hits, two takeaways. That's all, all he's got. No penalties. Like he managed to stay out of the box on that uh, while delivering the message to uh, Froelich. You know, like Kaskin can play 82 games like that as far as I'm concerned, but I know he won't. But, you know, that that's the good Kaskin we saw tonight. He was uh, he played a very strong game. I think we'll see. I will be absolutely, utterly shocked if the starting goalie is not Mike Smith. Mm-hmm. Mike Smith will be the starting goalie. It's very possible. Oh, he will be. Very possible. Yeah. He he outplayed Koskin in the preseason, and I think the coach prefers, has a, leans towards him anyway. Well, we'll see. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a I, toss-up. He, here's one other thing I want to see opening night. I want to see Ethan Bear on the top power play unit, Bruce. Mm-hmm. Like, I know they like to go with the veterans, and you got to earn it, but there's no way, there's no way Darnell Nurse is a more savvy skilled and effective offensive hockey player than Ethan Bear right now. There's just no way, I don't think. Yeah, well, Clefbaum would be the default choice. I mean, they were going to try Pearson, but uh, he never really got a chance because I never called any penalties until after he got hurt. <laughs> so uh, he, played, he, played, he played an entire game where they never got one power play, and then he played part of another one before he got hurt where they never got a power play. So we really didn't get much of a look at him in the PP, which is a big, his big skill that he was brought over to really help with. So Bear had a few iffy moments. He got walked by Sam Bennett. There was a few others. But I, I, thought, I, I thought he had another good game. I liked his game. And I really liked him with the puck. He is so, he is just, he is just, that extra agility that he's got has helped him both on the attack and on defense. He's just a little bit more squirmy with the puck and able to evade four checkers and make that nice pass. So uh, I'm I'm bullish on Bear right now. I'm bullish on Bear. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably a good thing we don't have a player named Bull then. Yes. <laughs> there have been players called Bull, haven't there? Wasn't there? Oh, yeah. There's a TV show called Bull. There was a ball. There was a, a oh. goon called Jared Ball. Remember that guy? Oh. I think he was from Germany. All right. Are we done? Leave it there. Uh, yeah, I yeah. Stop. I think I, I got that sports net thing off my chest. And uh, yeah, it's, a, it's preseason. I'm in, I'm in preseason form. And so to some extent, I apologize to the, to the listeners. That, that game, I've, I've had enough preseason. I'm ready for them to play real games. Let's get on with this stuff. When sports net heard you uh, criticizing them like that, they bla- they they blasted in their feed for two minutes there to distract you during the podcast that was a very clever move on their part they got their eyes are on you bruce mccurdy yeah well it's out there on twitter and i sure got a lot of likes from that for that (laughs) one post i made whining about sportsnet so i'm not alone i know this well the facebook feed (laughs) for the oilers has been excellent i have to say um until it crapped out with 10 minutes to go it had been excellent all preseason it's got fast forward Fast forward 10 but, seconds and rewind 10 seconds. Like I have no real thing. complaints about um, the Facebook as long as it was working. So that's my two cents on that, Bruce. I'm not sure. I mean, I, I wish it was on TV, of course, as yeah. well. Uh, well. But I'm glad to be able to see the game. And well, yeah, of course. I mean, in the olden days, we'd be listening to Rod Phillips doing all these games. And that would be that, right? And that's all we get. So at least you can watch them on the... On the little screen yeah all right thanks for talking tonight bruce thanks for listening everyone and then in the meantime and in between times this has been another edition of the cult of hockey podcast